fine. It's this heavy rain core that will be ra rolling across that area here very shortly. Uh, so as we see in the Tulsa area, dealing with heavy rain from Jinx uh, to Kiefer to Mounds. And so this line continues to move to the uh, uh, northeast. The line move is moving to the east, I should say, with the individual cells moving northeast. So let me put a lapse on this and I'll give you a latest storm track. So here's the cell. And what we're watching for is this, okay. So this real quick, let's, this is becoming a little more concerning. We're seeing some signs of some very weak rotation trying to develop within this. And let me look at base velocities here. Uh, still rather organized, unorganized. And that's a good sign. However, you can see this little notch, this little appendage that has developed. This is what we're going to be watching for because sometimes what happens is you get a little inflow notch into the storm and the potential for rotation to develop. And so looking at this storm, continuing to move to the northeast towards Glenpool and Jinx area uh, is not severe but could rapidly develop into severe criteria here in just a few minutes as it makes its way to the northeast through Glenpool, Jinx, and ORU. Looking at the hail detector with this storm, we're starting to see an uptick in the capability of producing severe hail from south uh, west of Glenpool to just west of Mounds. And we'll pluck this. And we've got a, uh, guys, we've got a phone off the hook. So if we could turn that off, please. Uh, we've got one inch in, in hail and one inch in diameter size hail just northwest of Mounds. Uh, we also see that, and that would take it up to about quarter size hail uh, northwest of Mounds moving towards the Glenpool area. And so back to reflectivity. Intense thunderstorm, and the problem is, is this is what we call it still discrete uh, supercell, and a little bit of inflow notch trying to develop within this cell, not that organized yet. Um, and we look at velocities, zooming in, and it's pretty uh, dis disorganized still. So that's good. We look at Viper still showing some signs of some weak low-level rotation with this. Meteorologist John Haverfield is getting closer. We've got Mike Scantlin. Uh, do we have him on the line? Mike, are you on the line? Mike, are you there? Yes, sir. All right, Mike, give us an update on your location, what you're seeing. Yes, sir. I'm on the Broken Arrow Expressway. I'm headed southeast to the 159 South. Uh, I've got my eyes. Uh, I've got my sight set on the storm coming up from the south. It looks like a kind of a little embedded supercell type of structure right. headed over Glenpool area. So it's moving, moving my direction. I'm going to hit 169 south, and uh, I'll have you a view once I get out of the rain, Mike. All right. So, you know, again, our velocities, what we detect rotation on, what we've been detecting rotation all day, not really locking in on this storm. But you can see, I believe that's Mark Fulta on the upper left-hand part of the screen, uh, the, the view is pretty ominous. And so this is the heavy core, this little appendage that we're going to be watching very closely uh, with our Viper. We do see the potential for some very, very weak low level rotation with this. Uh, at the very minimum, we could start to see some wind damage with this. Also, the hail potential increasing as well from just northwest of Mounds into the Glenpool area. And back to reflectivity as this continues to track northeast. What we'll do, we'll give you the latest track on this individual cell, moving into the Jinx area, uh, moving towards Bixby. So this is the storm right here in Kiefer that's gonna to continue to track to the northeast about 30 miles per hour. This is gonna take it into Jinx at 7.05, uh, the area of uh, most intense part of this thunderstorm, ORU 709. More likely you're gonna be dealing with heavy rain and thunderstorms ahead of this. So this is when that area of very weak low level rotation development uh, just west of the Glenpool area. Uh, Mark Fulta has been watching this as well. Mark's on the upper left-hand part of our screen. Mark, give us an update on what you're seeing as you uh, approach the Bixby area. Mark, are you there? Okay. Okay. We'll, get, we'll try to get Mark once again. So it's this area, pretty rugged, uh, but pretty intense nonetheless. And so we don't want to let our guards down, especially with the environment that we're dealing with right now uh, is uh, still tornado watch in effect until uh, 11 o'clock tonight. Pretty rugged, unorganized, 
That's the way we like it, and hopefully that stays that way as it continues to move across the metro region, producing very heavy rainfall as well, and we could be dealing with some flash flooding issues. As you can see, the very heavy rain core uh, moving across southern portions of Tulsa County. Mark, uh, get, you're, you're near the Bixby area. Tell us what you're seeing with that storm right now. Now in Bixby, I drove through that storm as it merged, and uh, there were probably some 45, 50 mile an hour winds in it and blinding rainfall, but other than that, nothing uh, to write home about. All right, uh, Mark, keep an eye on that as we uh, have seen all day these storms intensify rapidly and, uh, and, and produce tornadoes, unfortunately. Well, let's check back in with meteorologist John Haverfield. John, uh, update on your location and what you're seeing right now. Yeah, Mike, we're southbound now on Riverside, uh, coming up on 71st Street. I don't know if you saw on the stream there, but there was a pretty large branch uh, in the middle of the road there, indicative of probably blowed through this area, uh, blew through this area uh, just a few minutes ago. Uh, we still have torrential rainfall coming down. Visibility is not good at all, and starting to see some uh, ponding on the roadways, some minor street flooding ongoing now, and unfortunately, it's just going to get worse. Not good driving conditions at all across the Tulsa metro right now. Quite a bit of lightning and still some brief uh, gusty winds. Um, we're going to continue to go south on Riverside, see if we can intercept what looks to be maybe some broad rotation there uh, near the Glenpool area. We'll track it to the metro, Mike. Yeah, that's right, uh, John, and it is broad. It's, it's unorganized, but it does exist, and that's uh, warranting our continuous coverage here uh, because we do have tornado watch in effect to 11. The conditions are still uh, there to potentially develop into a tornadic situation, and the way this is setting up here, this cell, uh, we see the uh, little bit of an inflow notch with it and the appendage that is hanging down out of that storm. So what we're going to do is we'll take a look at some of our parameters that we have exclusively here at Two Works For You, the rotation detector that we've been able to really detect all uh, evening long. And we can see uh, near the Glenpool area some very weak areas or signals of some very weak low-level rotation. Again, very disorganized, uh, very broad area. Uh, nothing too uh, indicative right now of any uh, imminent tornado threat, so that is good. Uh, we do have cameras all across the area, as we mentioned. We'll look at uh, 71st and 169 as that heavy core gets closer uh, to this uh, proximity on our Buffalo Run Casino Resort weather camera network. We can see roadways really wet at this time, a lot of cloud to ground lightning strikes, and so this base is pretty much going to lift to the north over the next uh, 25 minutes. So back to radar right now, uh, there's velocity. We continue to see uh, activity uh, affect the metro region with some strong and heavy winds across, or strong winds and heavy rainfall across the metro region. This extends north towards Turley, north towards Mingo, Owasso, uh, the Collinsville area down south along 169, and the, the leading edge of the stronger winds heading towards Lynn Lane and Broken Arrow but it's the southern fringe that's out ahead of the, the main line to our west that has the potential for increasing uh, some intensity. It's, a li it's really disjointed, unorganized, so that is good. We look at velocities and not showing anything indicative of anything tor tornadic right now. Um, we still see signs of some strong winds, and that is, uh, appears to be it at this point in time. Uh, Mike Scantlin, you've been watching this as well. Give us an update on your location and what you're seeing right now. Yeah, Mike, I am southbound on 169, coming up on the Creek Turnpike, where we uh, do the little westward curve, uh, passing the 91st Street exit right now. And like John said, very heavy rainfall. There's a lot of ponding on the road. 169 is usually pretty, uh, usually pretty treacherous after some heavy rainfall like this, and that's the case right now. There's a lot of water on the road. Um, I'm going about 60 right now, and I feel like that's you know, just right at the cusp of what safe at this speed with how much water there is on the road. It's, uh, it's a hydroplane danger. It's, it's not a severe storm yet, but uh, there's a lot of cloud ground lightning. The, the cloud ground lightning has picked up quite a bit over the last 15 minutes or so. And uh, right now I'm hitting the creek turnpike back to the west, and uh, hopefully I can get a look underneath this base pretty soon, Mike. Uh, tell me a little more about the winds in your area. Do you see anything, at least the trees, Bending at all, or is this just uh, still I have, just heavy rain? I have rain? not had much wind. Uh, maybe some 40-ish, 40, 40 nothing severe, nothing close to severe. 
but uh, you know, 40 or 45 is going to do some damage. It'll knock some small branches down, maybe blow your trash cans around. But uh, you know, a just barely not severe storm moving through the South Metro right now, Mike. Okay, thank you very much, Mike Scantlin. We have also uh, meteorologist John Haverfield, who continues to track the storm along Riverside. And John, give us an update on what you're seeing. Yeah, Mike, uh, not much change uh, here with this storm. Again, we're on uh, Riverside uh, near the River Spirit Casino now, uh, still southbound. And torrential rain still coming down. Again, ponding on the roadways. You definitely want to take it slow if you're going to be driving here in the next uh, few minutes because uh, rain's really coming down. Again, you could hydroplane in a hurry. And, of course, we're seeing the ponding on parts of the roadways as well and uh, flooding could become an issue here across parts of the metro uh, here in the, in the next hour or so so we'll have to uh, keep a close eye on that but in terms of the storm we're getting closer to uh, maybe the inflow area just a few miles down to our south and we're going to con continue to head down that way mike back to you all right so that that little appendage that we were watching is uh, about to head right over you right now uh, i mean it is incredibly close to you as uh, far as the wind speeds, though, I mean, looking at the trees, it just doesn't look that impressive, right? Uh, that's right. Uh, I would say nothing over maybe 40 miles per hour. You might get a quick gust of, to 40, but uh, in terms of constant wind, uh, just not a whole lot uh, below severe limits the way it looks now. All right, so where we see this pinage, I see just ahead of you, uh, you know, the, the actual the base of the cloud a little bit. You can see the rain uh, diminishing some. Uh, as you look at that that appendage area that is heading your way, what exactly are you seeing as far as looking at the clouds there? Uh, and visually, unfortunately, we've got a lot of rain between us and, and that area, uh, so we're not going to be able to see it just yet, but we are getting closer. Uh, and I could tell uh, just to the way it looks on reflectivity that there could be uh, possibly some inflow there that could uh, increase the rotation just a bit toward Glenpool. But we should have a visual once we get a little bit out of this rain, Mike. Uh, that's right. And we see that you're getting out in that little break area and we see that lower clouds there um, moving from uh, west to east just ahead of you. And that's right where let's go to radar real quick and I'm going to show you exactly what we're talking about. So we have this little appendage that has developed and this was the area that we were watching maybe some inflow into the storm again nothing too spectacular as far as any tornado threat uh, the possibility for maybe some strong winds moving into jinx right now as we see with our uh, rotation detector and viper as well um, let me look at velocities too and uh, pauses for you we do not see any low level areas of uh, organization for rotation uh, the potential for again 30 35 mile an hour winds and that's it. So it looks a, a lot more intense on the radar as far as severity, uh, but luckily it's on the low end of severe weather scale. A lot of cloud to ground lightning strikes. Look at all the lightning out to the west. And what's going to happen is this is going to trail train over the same areas and flash flooding is going to become a major concern as we go through the next, uh, at least the next couple of hours. Um, so the tornado warning for Ottawa County continues until 715. We're going to continue to track these storms as they move across the metro region. So be sure to keep it right here to Two Works for You. We'll keep you safe throughout the evening hours. quickly that seven o'clock hour hit really quickly i meant to go back to programming then if you'd like to make a call please hang up and try again oh if you need help, okay hang up and then dial your all right yeah if you'd like to make a call please hang up and try again oh. if you need help hang up and then dial your operator
This is a two works for you severe weather alert. Oh, really? Yeah, he was like, oh, private school.
Hey guys, are you back there? Can we do a cut in, please? Oh no, just next break. It'll be really quick too. Okay, thank you. What's up, Harry? Oh, yeah. Huh. I'm sorry about your boss, man. What, was she mad? Aaron was trying to calm her the heck down. Was she, like, really mad, or...? Yes! Aaron was like, chill out. She's like, she's on her high horse. She's like, she does goes, gets pedicures all the time. Obviously, she's at her house because she's watching TV. Uh, I don't, I don't get it. And Jessica, the girl who I work with, uh, was home before I was. Because she's terrified of storms. And she's like, I'm going home. Yeah, what, you want her, you, you know, in a normal capacity, traveling around in severe weather, yeah. you know. Yeah, had a tornado go. Our, uh, I mean, that Wagner storm was hit almost one of my stores in mm -hmm. Coweta. I, I, I'm gonna have Aaron yeah, keep on her because it's just ridiculous. I wonder if she'll say anything to me. No. But you knew somehow that somebody was upset, right? Yeah, because Jacob, my boss, texted me. What did he say? He, he said stupid question because I already talked to him this morning about because I made a bunch of sales this morning mm -hmm. and I had already talked to him and he texted me uh, uh, are, you're working today correct I'm like that's my last thing to say mm -hmm. he goes Jacqueline just texted me and said that she heard you were on the news <laughs> I'm trying to save lives over here just so you because this is what I told Aaron Aaron's like, I don't want to, shouldn't be dealing with this. But I was like, please do, because I don't want him to get in trouble for helping me out. And I told, and I told her to tell her it's, it's for me and not anybody else that we're just short and we need it. And this was like once a year type deal too, all the tornadoes? Um, I had the weather on in the background. Yeah, yeah. I guess John is chasing storms in Wasso, the opposite side of the city from his territory. I texted his boss and, his, and said, is John working at RNDC today? Yes. And I said, uh, I helped John out. He's doing me a favor. She's like, I'm trying. I go, you got all his work done. I said, maybe he had, Aaron said, I said, maybe she said to her, maybe he had a slow day and he decided to help out. I go, tell her he, he's helping me out because we are down on, on all our mats. She's like, I did. And I go, thank you. She's not happy, but she's the pot calling the kettle black. She goes and gets her nails and toes done all the time. <laughs> she's like, total rookie move. I said, he's pretty responsible, so I'm sure his, he had his stuff done. Yes. They want us to do five stores a day, and that's what I did. I, you even wanted me to come in earlier, but I was like, no, I got to get stuff I know, done. I know. Show her those texts. She goes, I'm sure he had, she told her, I'm sure he has a 